Hey you guys. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Delon Williams. Um, and if you've already been following me and following my journey, you know that um, I've been walking with Jesus and just kind of restarting my life, restarting my um, journey with him. So that's how I want to start is letting you know that I am um, a believer of Jesus Christ. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And if you are not, this testimony may be, um, I don't know, it may confuse you. It may, you may not accept it, whatever it may be. But for the followers of Jesus and for the, for the ones who know who he is, um, this can really help you and really be beneficial to you. So I'm just going to start. So my whole journey started um, back in 2018. I was in a relationship with this guy who I thought that I was really going to be with forever, really. I mean, it was the first relationship where I felt like I was loved and accepted and I really, really wanted to be with him. Um, I found out some things and we ended up breaking up. After we ended up breaking up, I was kind of left with um, having to take on the responsibility of rent and bills because we had been living together in an apartment. I had to take on the responsibility financially of everything. So um, I started to get behind. At this time, I was only work. I was only working doing makeup. So I started to get behind. I didn't really have enough money, and what I was making was not enough to sustain me, and not enough to sustain the bills and the rent. But I was so prideful, like I can do this. You know what I'm saying? I got enough clients or whatever. At this time, I was also addicted to marijuana. So I was constant. that's where most of my money was going, just constantly buying weed, constantly using it up for the wrong reasons. So I was just being bad with my money, really making bad financial decisions. So, so in October of 2018, I was facing eviction. I remember just being so depressed. I'm talking <laughs> eyes swollen shut because of how, how much crying I was doing and how much, I mean, just deep darkness deep darkness and deep depression so i ended up getting evicted and i didn't have anywhere to go i could have lived with my parents but i decided no i can't I, that that was just bottom of the bottom to me i was like no i'm, I'm not living with my parents that's no i can i can still do this on my own or whatever so i had a friend melanie who allowed me to stay with her and um i stayed with her for three months now at this time I'm still severely, severely depressed. I have no job. I'm just doing makeup clients. I have no boyfriend anymore. I have no home anymore. So I was I was going through a rough, rough time in my life. I tried to cling on to what I know, which is Jesus, and um, you know, really seek him, but it wasn't wholeheartedly and it wasn't it wasn't really serious. It was it was more so, okay, I'm in a bind, so now I'm about to pray to you, you know, what's up? Hey, can you help me out? But still, even in your darkness, God will use you. So I was uh, praying and I was on the patio this one day and he revealed to me that I have to go and live with my parents. And I started crying. I'm like, God, no, please don't. You know, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I just feel like that's rock bottom. I feel like that's like, I don't know. There was this, this certain stigma that I had in my head that if I end up back with my parents, moving in back with my parents, that was just so low of me that's how I felt which was not true but you know the enemy will have you thinking of things in your head that you get revelation from God about and think that it's the wrong thing to do so I fought it for a while so I started living with my parents now I still felt like um I had something going for me I had my makeup business I got my makeup business I got my clients you know it's, it's not like I'm rock bottom this is something that you can climb out of that's how i'm feeling to myself a couple months into staying with my parents i did not i was still bad with my money and i got into a financial situation with my um my makeup suite so i ended up getting kicked out of there i was not able to afford it i wasn't being um, smart with my money and i was kicked out of there so here i am now let's let's tally this up now i have no a relationship anymore I have no home anymore I have no makeup business so I was really like god why are you why are you doing this to me I felt like he was really punishing me like 
I know now that I had to be humbled. I had to be humbled to get to where I am today. I had to go through all of this to have this testimony to get to where I am today. I'm sorry, I get a little teared up because it's just, it's, it's real. So, um, a couple months after I lost my makeup business, I get into a car accident. So now the one thing that I had that belonged to me, my car, <laughs> gets taken away. I get into a car accident. And not only did I get into a car accident, it was totaled. It was totaled. So I didn't have anything. At this point, I didn't have anything. No job, no car, no boyfriend, no home, no makeup business. I mean, you talking about rock bottom? Rock bottom. So, um, this is where the enemy kind of got involved into my life. Um, the thing is, when you are faced with calamity in your life, when you're faced with tough decisions, when you're faced with weakness and depression and things that just bring you down to the bottom in your life, you can either choose to look towards light or you can choose to look towards darkness. And I chose to look towards darkness because to me, I didn't want to hear what God was saying. God was, I knew that this was a strategic situation where God was taking these things one by one away from me. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to accept that. So I'm like, what can I do on my own to build myself back up? That's how I felt about it. What can I, what can I, well, since I'm starting from rock bottom, I need to find what's within me that I can use to build myself back up. So um, I started working at this temp job, Indiana Farmers Mutual Insurance. So it was a um, like an insurance company. I was in the mail room. I was like the mail girl. So they allowed me to listen to my earbuds while I was at work. And so I would listen to my earbuds and um, just just listen to whatever I wanted to. Music sometimes. Um, other times it would be sermons and preachers and pastors and stuff like that. I started going to YouTube videos and just listening to like people talk on YouTube or whatever. And I had researched self-love. Because I was like, okay, well, I'm at the point where I really don't love myself. I felt like all of these things that I had in my life made me who I was. All of these things were, you know, so who am I without these things? Who am I without the, the makeup artist? Who am I without my car, my home, my boyfriend? And who, you know, who am I, who am I without those things? And I did not know. So I was like, okay, I need to start from square one. I need to start from self-love. I need to start from getting to know myself and, you know, figuring out what I really want in life and all of that. I started researching videos on YouTube about self-love. And there was this girl on there and um, she was like, well, one thing that really helped me was studying the law of attraction. And this was the first time I was introduced to the law of attraction was just hearing through her self-love video that that's what really helped her to become the woman that she is and, you know, establish her how she wanted to be established, basically. Um, so I started looking it up and I'm like, okay, so what is this law of attraction? What is, you know, and so she would talk about this lady who goes by the name Esther. But when she speaks about the law of attraction, she channels energy into her that she calls Abraham. That energy then talks to, she holds seminars. So that energy then speaks through her to people who have questions about life or whatever. So I started studying her. Basically, if you don't know what the law of attraction is, it's basically the study of how you can use your mind, how you can use your energy, how, can you, how you can use your focus to attain the things that you want in life. Now that doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound like it's evil. It doesn't sound like it's out of the ordinary. Who wouldn't want to attain the things that they can have in life? So I never got an, an evil feeling at first about the law of attraction. I was, I was enticed to it because that was where I was broken in my life and wanting some type of clarity and some type of something to help me to get to where I needed to be. So um, I began studying this lady and she would say things like, um, imagine yourself where you want to be and, and um, use your focus and your energy and focus on that all day. Focus on positivity and things that are um, high frequency and vibrating at a, at a high level. So um, we've all heard these terms before. We've heard the terms of manifestation, um, 
um, vibrations and energies and chakras and all of it is tied into the same thing. So that's basically what I began to study. And um, I got very, very, very deep into it, very deep into it. Um, I started to what I thought was manifesting stuff in my life. I started to um, I would think on something all day long at work and then I would see a glimpse of that in my life some way or another. So um, I started putting into practice some of these things. I'm not going to go too much into detail about some of the um, techniques and practices that you could do for this because it's just it's just evil. So I'm, I'm not going to go too much into detail about it. But um, I was practicing these things. I was practicing these things. Um, so I got to the point where I, I was listening to aura cleansing music. I was meditating, doing research about my chakras and energies. Um, I was going to events around the city that um, were, were geared towards cleansing chakras and cleansing energies and, and Reiki and, and all of this extra stuff that has to do with all the same thing, basically. My desire to go back to the way that I had lived before did not change. That's what I want. I wanted my old life back. In my mind, I'm thinking I'm expanding. I'm, I'm going through a spiritual awakening. I'm woke. I'm My third eye is opening. That's what I'm thinking. So um, the thing is, I did not know that I was basically being influenced by demons, by spirits by spiritual beings that have the same type of information that Christ has because there is a such thing as fallen angels. So there's a, there's these spiritual beings that have a lot of the knowledge that Christ has, but uses them in a manipulative, um, you can chase this for your own desires, you can manipulate this way, you can influence people this way, and you can get what you want, right? A lot of people practice this. A lot of people practice this. I fast forward, um, if you don't know about my family, I mean, I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of you guys don't know about my family, but um, a lot of us have um, spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts, especially in my immediate family, my, my siblings and I. Um, and I have the gift to kind of feel spirits and my brother has the gift of seeing them. So um, this particular night, it was a it was a night that I um, I had still been studying these things and mind you I had been trying to get other people on this stuff and that's that's why it's so important to to know what you're getting into because the enemy he has a recruiting spirit he likes to get other people involved and other people on board with what you're doing that's evil he doesn't just you know he doesn't just keep you in a corner just like christ doesn't just keep you in a corner with the knowledge and the revelation that he gives you he gives you this unction to want to share to other people so i'm sharing to everybody i know yeah girl i've been studying the law of attraction and you know this can really help you in your life and i've gotten a lot of positivity from it and blah 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 whatever just giving it to people that I knew and uh, my siblings were some people that I gave it to. I was over my sister's house and um, she was with her girlfriend and my brother was there. There was a couple more people there like their friends and um, they were talking about doing mushrooms. Now mind you I'm not I've never really been a substance person. I really didn't start smoking weed until I was older but with me studying the law of attraction i was more enticed to to substances because i knew that they could heighten your experience i knew that i could um, go further in my transcendence and in my spiritual awakening so mind you i'm doing all of this because <laughs> it it it's it's different words we're using different words for the same thing which is deception which is evil it's all tied up in satan and his plans for for people to be deceived that's really what he does is he comes to deceive i'm like okay well yeah I, i've read about mushrooms i know that they can you know help me transcend help me to find you know more answers about my life um through this spiritual awakening maybe i can speak to my ancestors or maybe i can you know just trying to reach really reach for some type of clarity with the law of attraction i had also been studying numerology and basically synchronicities um 
just like double digits and seeing 11 11 and um 9 11 and 333 3, 3 and what these numbers mean and and these are my spiritual guides this is what i believe these are my spiritual guides um talking to me and they're saying this and saying that so i remember um i had seen a double i can't remember what number it was i think it was like 9 11 or something like that but i saw a double number before we had um uh, done the mushrooms I went to Google and I'm like, oh, well, this this is telling me that I'm going to do this. And and basically the number had said you're going to go through a spiritual awakening. This is going to be um, something that takes you further in your journey. So I got excited. I'm like, OK, cool. Let's do it. Let's do the mushrooms. Let's figure this out or whatever. So I'm telling my siblings I'm excited for it. All of that. So we ended up doing them. This drug lasts for 13 hours. Let that sink in. <laughs> This drug lasts for 13 hours. So um, I did this twice. My first experience with uh, mushrooms is that you can know what people are thinking without necessarily hearing a voice talk to you in your head as far as like what they're saying. Like you can't hear them talking, but you can look at them and know what they're feeling, know what their energy is saying, know what, know what they want to do. Um, it's almost like being able to see into people's spirits. So this is not a, a physical realm anymore. Now that I've taken this drug, I'm in a spiritual realm. There was this girl there that was at this little party we were having. And um, she was sitting on the couch. We were all in like a corner dancing with each other, just feeling good. And um, I knew she hadn't even looked at us, but I knew that she wanted to come and dance with us. I felt that. I just felt it. She really, she's thinking in her head. I want to dance with them I want to dance with them so I go get her and I'm like come on girl I know you want to dance with us and she's like yeah yeah so she starts having a good time with us we're all dancing or whatever but um that was just one example of knowing what somebody's thinking and they don't have to say anything to you off of mushrooms so another example um I can't remember which one of who it was that had taken a shot of alcohol and they came up to us and I saw not really saw but felt that their energy was down and like somber and depressed and low and I was like oh no you're 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 low I don't know you're like low frequency or low vibrational what did you do and they're like well I took a shot and you know I shouldn't have took the shot because now it's got me feeling whatever but um so basically it was just my first experience was just an awakening of seeing how I could feel people's energy, how I could sense what people are thinking. And um, and so the first time for me, that was exactly what I was going for, was this spiritual transcendence, this spiritual awakening, this um, more answers to my questions in life. And, you know, so I'm thinking, well, mushrooms are good. Um, that was the first time that we used them. The second time that we used them, um, it was a different night. It was just the 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 whole vibe of the night was just different and um we still prepared to do the mushrooms same group of people that were there last time we all prepared to do the mushrooms again this time my brother took only a little little bit this time was so different for me i was sitting on the couch and i kept hearing like every time i looked at someone I knew what they were thinking or I knew the vibe that they were giving off. I knew what they wanted. I knew things about them. And so it started creeping me out. Like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to look at these people and get, get what they're really thinking. I, I feel like I could know their true intentions. I didn't want that. So I'm like, I'm, I'm getting kind of overwhelmed. I'm getting overwhelmed. And so then I start hearing this voice in my head and it sounded like myself, but it, it was saying they don't know that you can read their thoughts. They don't know that you can hear them. They don't know that you can do this. And so I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? But I'm hearing this voice and it's like, um, you can use them. You can manipulate them. You can influence them. And so I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I was just, I was freaked out. And so I remember looking over at Taylor, which is my sister's girlfriend. And I was like, am I crazy? Am I crazy? I remember my t my eyes welling up with tears and everything. And I'm like, am I crazy? Because I don't I don't understand what's going on. And she's like, what are you talking about? I said, I just, I don't know. Can, can you hear these, these voices? And she's like, no, just calm down. You know, it's just the drug or whatever. 
So I tried to push it off. So then um, we started playing this video game. Me and my two siblings, my brother and my sister. We started uh, playing this video game and um, I it was like a fighting game and I was beating my sister like my character was was beating my sister in the game and so my brother he's standing right here my sister's standing right here I'm sitting down playing the game and so my brother's like Delon you are really beating her down you are really dang you you really killing it Delon and my sister's going no 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 wait 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 I can do it I can do it look 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 and I felt this rivalry between them for my attention and this voice is kind of telling me do you see this do you see what's going on here? Do you see how they want your attention? You can use that. So basically teaching me this, this, whatever this is, is teaching me how to manipulate energy, how to manipulate, um, um, people's just th their thoughts, teaching me manipulation, teaching me influence. So, um, I let that go, you know, another experience that just moved past in the night, whatever. Mind you, I said this lasts for 13 hours. So there was so many different things that happened that just were like, I can't remember everything that happened. So um, I do remember this other part. I went to um, my sister's bedroom and I just laid out on the bed and I'm just looking up at the ceiling and just thinking about whatever. And then here comes everybody one by one so pretty soon we're all just looking up at the at the ceiling and so my sister says this reminds me of that 70s show like how did we all she was like i don't know what it is about you like you've got some type of drawing spirit like some type of light to you where everybody comes and just why did everybody come from the living room and lay in here with you you know and so again i'm getting this thing in my head like hmm i can i i have uh, a gift to like draw people in I can you know and then I started getting these sexual thoughts that were so impure and so it was like let's all have group sex that's the thought that I was getting in my head laying here these are my siblings these are my family you know this is this these are friends and so I'm thinking in my head what if we just had group sex so another um defiled spirit coming and trying to influence my thoughts and my thought process or whatever so i let that thought pass i ended up going to the bathroom bathroom door was closed but i could still feel and know what was going on outside of the bathroom i knew who was talking i knew who was saying what i knew who felt like what i knew who was walking past the bathroom like it's really it's really weird but it was these spirits within me that were giving me revelation about all types of things so I knew who was outside of the bathroom so I get this knock on the bathroom and I knew it was my brother and so he I said come on in Davia he comes in and he says um Delon so this law of attraction thing um I mean what you never really explained it fully to me you know I, I kind of heard a little bit about it but you know what's what's going on what do you really what is it and so the first thing that I said was i remember going like this i said the church and jesus is so small so small there are so many other people that you can be ruled under there's so many other universes and and this is just one thing that people choose to worship is jesus but there's so many other things that you can worship there's so many other you know universes out here we don't have to be that's just a small minded to think that jesus and the church is what it is that's just so small minded so he says that as I, this is later on after we've talked about the situation, but he said, as I was talking to him, he saw my neck get black and my ankles get black, like around here while I'm telling him this. So he says, I, first of all, I'm, I'm, I, while I'm explaining this to him, he says, no, 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 no. And I, and off of this drug, I'm telling you, you can really feel, feel other people's energy other people's um their feelings their thoughts all of that so i just remember feeling his heart break his heart was crushed when i told him this so there was a candle that was sitting on the back of the toilet seat it flew off as he said no the candle flies off the toilet seat he told me later that i did that that i moved the candle so um now I'm telling you, this is this is this is where it gets 
crazy. This is where it gets supernatural crazy. So please have an open mind. You know what I mean? Don't be fearful about what I tell you, but you have to know that this is real. You have to know this is true. So um, he, he stands up and he says, you're not going to take my sister. And he's talking to the demon that's inside of me. You're not going to take my sister. You're not going to take my sister. And so I say, whoa, 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 what's going on? He says, the blood of Jesus. Soon as he says that, I shriveled up in the corner. I, sh I mean, I was so frightened by those words. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What you saying that for? What you saying that for? And so he says, um, the same spirit that's in you, it's in me. And his voice gets deep and demonic. And his appearance kind of changed like he was strong and you know what I mean mad and this demon was inside of him as well so he says the same spirit that's in you is the same spirit that's in me I'm not gonna let you take my sister so at this point it's him talking and the demon talking so I get scared I'll run out of the bathroom and I'm sitting down with um my sister and I'm just like shriveled up i'm like i don't know what's going on y'all i don't know what's going on but i'm scared I got this cover on me like <sighs> so mind you i told you he has the gift to see spirits physically see them so he comes out of the bathroom and he's like oh my god oh my god oh my god looking around the room and he says y'all please 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 we ingested demons then through this drug we put demons into our body we put demons into our body and i need y'all to get up i need y'all to get up there's this one boy there and he gets up and puts his hood on and walks past Davian. And Davian is, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, please, please, please. Basically, he told me later on that that demon told him to get up, told him to put his hood on. Like he could see the spirit within the person. Everybody was kind of like, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. So um, everybody gets up, walks out one by one. They're like, he's tripping, he's tripping, you know. So my sister he was really riled up about the fact that Davian was coming in there saying the blood of Jesus and, you know, we ingested demons and, you know, we got to get out of here or whatever. So she was really upset about that. And so he told me later that there were demons inside of her, multiple inside of her that were telling him we pay rent here. We pay rent here. We pay rent here. That's what she was screaming. We pay. You gonna get the police called on us. We pay rent here. But it was really the demon saying we we belong here. We live here. So why would you cast us out? We live here. So, um, mind you, I'm still shook. I'm like, this is too much. This is too much. You know, he's, he's tripping. He takes me out onto the patio. This is winter time. This is December. This is freezing cold outside. So, um, he takes me outside and puts me on the patio and he's like, um, Delon, I need you to say the blood of Jesus. I need you to say the blood of Jesus. And so I'm like, Davian, it's not that deep. You know, just calm down. It's the drug. No, no, no. He's grabbing me. I need you to say the blood of Jesus. So I'm saying the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. That's how I felt. I felt like it wasn't doing anything. I felt like it was pointless. I didn't believe in Jesus at this point. So I'm like, what are you telling me to do this for? So um, he keeps saying, say it, say it, say it. And uh, we're out there on the patio and um, my sister was the only one in the house. My sister was the only one in the house, but she's mad. She's, she's mad that she's mad that this whole situation even happens. He goes to grab my phone and he says, we need to call mommy. We need to call mommy. Now my mom traditionally um, is the person that we will always call whenever we went through anything spiritual. Whenever we were attacked by any spirits or whenever we were going through something spiritually we would call her because she was the one who would kind of help us and and uh she we knew that she had authority we knew that she had power through jesus christ so we were like you know you know everybody got that one grandma or that praying auntie that you know you can call and they can get you through something so that was my mom for us so he calls her and he's like um Mom, I need you to pray. I need you to pray because we took some drugs and we have demons in us. And I need you to pray. I need you to pray. And so she is mad on the phone. She's like, what? What you mean? What? I told y'all about drugs. I told y'all about blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. I can't believe y'all. What did y'all take? 
whatever. So she wasn't in the right mindset to pray. She was mad that we had taken the drugs. So I get on the phone with her and she's like, Delon, what did y'all take? I said, we just took some mushrooms. This is how I was talking, y'all. This is how I was talking. We just took some mushrooms. We're fine. We're fine. And I kept saying, shh, to my brother, kind of calming him down. Shh, it's okay. It's okay. Shh. And so he snatches the phone from me. He says, no, mom, that's a demon. That's a demon speaking through her. Speaking through her and trying to make you feel like there's nothing wrong. You know, you, you don't need to come. There, There's something going on and I need you to pray. I need you to help us. And so she says, okay, come to the house. Come to the house. Y'all need to go ahead and come to the house. And, okay, so he gets off the phone with her. He keeps saying, Dylan, I need you to say the blood of Jesus. I need you to say the blood of Jesus. And he's grabbing my face. I need you to say the blood of Jesus. I need you to say the blood of Jesus. So I'm saying the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And I start crying. And he says, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I see it in you. He said, Dylan, I see so much light in you. I know Jesus is still inside of you. Come on, come on. I need you to get it out. I need you to get it out. And so I just started feeling so sorrowful, so heartbroken, just like I had really sinned. You know, I just felt like I, t I turned my back on Jesus. So I, I was like, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, you know, but I still had these demons inside of me that wouldn't fully let me say it. He says, um, Delar, we have to get out of here. We have to get out of here. He ended up running back into the house and trying to talk to my sister, but they ended up physically fighting. He said that he was trying to fight the demons that were inside of her. And it was basically like, they were like, no, you're not, well, she's not leaving. We're not leaving. So, you know, so he said, now mind you, this is winter time, but he said when he got into the house, it was hot, like fire, hot inside of there and when we were out on the patio it was you know it's winter time so he said delon i need you to run through this house okay you can't stop you can't grab your stuff i need you to run through this house on the count of three we're gonna run and we're gonna jump in your car okay we gotta get out of here we gotta get out of here and so i'm like okay 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 you know scared but i'm like okay i'm, I'm trusting you so he grabs me, one, two, three. We run through the patio, run through the front door. I'm running out to the car, start the car. And I see him running like a crazy man. I mean, and, and you've seen people on drugs. You've seen people foaming at the mouth and just, you know what I mean, crusty lipped and, and you know, and this is winter time. We ain't got no clothes on. I got on a tank top and some shorts because I was in the house. So, I mean, we look crazy. <laughs> Physically, we look crazy. So he's running to the car. Delon, Delon, start the car, start the car. So I start the car and we're driving and he says, Delon, the demons are inside of you and they're inside of me. So I need you to just stay focused. I need you to take us to my parents' house. So um, the number of my, my parents' address is 7707. So he says, 7707, you know it, right? Now he's rubbing me on my arm. Well, on this arm, because he's uh, in the in the passenger seat. So he's rubbing me on my arm constantly like that. 7707, you know it, right? 7707, you know it, right? He kept saying that, just like that. And so I'm like, yeah, 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 I know it, I know it, I know it. So I'm driving, and he says to roll down all the windows. He said, you can't make them comfortable. You're making them comfortable, because I turn on the heat. I'm like, I'm cold, baby. No, you're making them comfortable. Roll down the windows, roll down the windows. So we're flying at 3 a.m. in the winter time with all the windows down on the highway off this drug trying to get to my parents house so um i knew that he had spirits in him and i could not look at him i could not look over at him i was too scared to look over at him so i'm going yeah i know i know i know 7707 you know it right 7707 you know it right so He's foaming, he's, you know, it was just, we're both possessed <laughs> at this point. So I look at my rear view mirror and all I saw was black darkness, just a heavy, you know what I mean? Some type of darkness that you can feel. It, these demons are in my car. They're in my car. Mind you, I had asked, I had invited them in in the months prior studying this stuff, not knowing that I'm, I'm, I'm studying witchcraft, I'm studying manipulation, I'm studying energies and chakras and all this stuff that really invited these spiritual guides, demons, into my life. So not only did I bring them in from the drug, I also brought them in from what I've been studying, what I've been doing in the dark. I was driving, trying to get us to 7707. 
and I say, um, but Davy, what are we going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And so he calls out the spirit's name that was trying to take over me. And so he says, hopelessness, hopelessness and grabs the wheel. And so now we're fighting over the wheel. I'm like, I got it. I got it. No, 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 no. Give me the wheel. Give me the wheel. He had this supernatural strength that I could not get that wheel back. So he says, you need to pull over. Pull over, pull over, because we're not going to make it to 7707. If you keep driving, they're going to take you somewhere else. So I pull over, switch spots. He gets in the driver's seat. I get in the passenger seat. He drives us to a gas station. He said, we're not going to make it to 7707. We're not going to make it there. He takes me to this gas station. Mind you, it's still 3 o'clock in the morning. We look like we're off drugs. I'm in a tank top and some shorts. He's in, you know what I mean, we're... we're we're, we're looking like crazy people. So, um, I didn't have my phone at this point. And he um, knocks on this guy's door, on this guy's uh, car door. And he says, can we please use your phone? Can we please use your phone? And so, um, the guy lets him use his phone. He calls my mom. And I remember him saying to the guy, you're going to see me again one day. You're going to see me again one day. In my head, I'm thinking, is this my husband? crazy thought didn't i mean came out of nowhere but it it, it just it, it goes to show the things that i have been desiring in my life the things that i have been trying to draw and attract into my life these spirits are now telling me oh that's your husband no it's not this is some guy at the gas station but anyway so they're still trying to deceive me, still trying to, you know, manipulate me or whatever. And so um, he says, you're going to see me again. You're going to see me again. And so he hands his phone back, tells my mom what the address is to the gas station. And, you know, she's going to be on her way or whatever. So everybody drives off. And now it's just me and Davian in this gas station parking lot. He says, okay, Delon, come on. Okay, we're going to have to fight them off. We're going to have to get them out of you. We're going to have to get them out of you. I know you're tired. I know you're cold. But you're going to have to get them out of you. So I remember I had on this like furry jacket that I used to wear and um, he was like, take that off, take that off because you're making them comfortable in your body. And so I'm like, I'm cold, dang it, I'm cold, I'm tired, I don't want to do this. And so he grabs my hand and he says, the blood of Jesus, say it, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. So I'm saying it, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. So then I remember my mouth became like mush and I was like, blood, 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 blood. Blah, blah, blah. I could not get it out. So he would grab my face. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So I'm saying it. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. He starts going like this on me. And so um, he's like, get out of her. Get out of her. Mind you, there are demons in him. He's trying to cast them out of me. Get out of her. Leave her. Leave her. So I start doing it to myself. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So I finally break down. I'm like, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to live like this no more. I'm tired of chasing stuff that's not of you. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Just confessing, confessing to God. Right when I do that, I'm feeling these spirits leave me. It's like a feeling and there was about three of them that left me i know there were multiple inside of me so um as they're leaving i'm still the blood of jesus the blood of jesus i'm sorry god i'm sorry god so he's like yeah delon that's it that's it keep going keep going keep going so we see this lady come from behind the gas station she came just out of nowhere from behind the gas station and she says to us y'all cold ain't y'all <laughs> y'all look so cold y'all look like fools out here it's cold huh yeah yeah keep saying it keep saying it <laughs> taunting us for being out there what i now know is that one of the demons that left me flew into her and that's why it's so important to be prayed up it is so important to be covered it is so important because these these entities need somewhere to go. They need somewhere to live. They need a vessel. Just like Jesus Christ uses vessels, people, his spirit. So, I mean, you're fooled into believing that they don't they don't transfer from person to person. So, yeah, so she comes taunting us and he's like, uh, that's a demon in her. That's a demon in her. 
So we we are, and she was a prostitute because just the way she was dressed, it was 3 a.m. It's freezing cold, but she got on boobs out and, you know, shorts on. And she goes and leans over to this guy who was parked. So I knew, you know what I mean? She ain't about to write anyway. But he says, keep going, Delon. You are so strong. You are so powerful, Delon. Keep going and keep, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep believing. Keep believing. So... I feel this army of angels, holy angels that came around me, y'all. When I say tens of thousands of thousands of angels just came right next to me and were standing with me. But they were also looking at me like, you know better. Why are we here? You know better, Delon, than, than to be where you are. You know better than to have been studying what you were studying. You know better than to even be in this predicament. Why are we here to rescue you? Then I feel God coming down. It was like he was on a horse or a chariot or something, some type of he was coming and behind the angels. So my brother's going, oh, my God. Mind you, I told you he can see them. So he's going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Yeah, Delon. Okay, okay, okay. So he starts backing up. Now, the Bible says that the wicked run when nobody is chasing them and that the righteous are as bold as lions. So if you think about this spiritually and think about this spiritual warfare that we're going, that, that's happening right now, he's backing up. He's like, okay, I can't, there's no way I can even stand under this. So he starts physically walking away. Like he turns around, starts walking away. And so I would say, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, I don't want this no more. Get out of me, whatever, you know. And so um, every time I felt like I would get weak, or I didn't believe, or I felt like this was not really happening, my brother would turn back around and start coming towards me, just walking towards me. Now, mind you, these are the demons in him, just, you know, walking towards me. And so I would say, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. He would back up and turn back around. So we did that at least three, four times, him coming back and turning around, coming back, turning around, spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare. This lady from inside the gas station, she says, are y'all all right? Y'all okay? And I saw the light of God within her. I knew that she was a Christian. I knew she was a believer. So she says, um, are y'all all right? And so he said, yeah, we just got some demons in us. We just got some demons in us. We got to get them out. She's like, okay, all right. Well, when y'all get done, come get some water. So he's like, all right, all right. Crazy, crazy. It's crazy how Christians and people who are really true followers of Christ, this is not a surprise. These types of things are not new. These these types of things are not um, unknown. They know that these things exist. And so to the world, it seems foolish. I have a scripture that I want to read you. 1 Corinthians verse 18 and 19 from the NASB version of the Bible. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So as I'm saying, the blood of Jesus, that's the power of God and him dying on the cross. That's what I believe. So I am using the power of God to defeat the enemy, to defeat these spiritual forces that are trying to attack me. And to anybody else, this is foolishness. To the world who does not believe, this is foolishness. We're off a drug. We're not, we're crazy. We end up going into the gas station. We're sitting at this table and my brother says, I know you want to stop. I know you tired, Delon, but we got to keep saying it. We got to keep saying it. They're still here. They're still here. Say the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. So I'm holding his hand at the table. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. So then my gaze just starts going to the side and I'm like, and so he grabs my face. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. But it, it was like these spirits did not want to come out of me, one. They did not want me to be saying the blood of Jesus, which is why when I was out there trying to say it, my mouth was mumbled. They did not want this to happen. So I'm getting distracted. I'm, you know, I'm getting tired. I mean, all kinds of things to keep me from saying the blood of Jesus and to keep me from getting all of these demons out of me. My parents pull up. When I say authority, authority, that's all I felt. That's all I saw was two light beams. Authority, authority, authority. So I knew I was in trouble. Well, these spirits inside of me knew, okay, we're in trouble. We're, we're scared. We're scared. 
So they get out of the car coming up to the gas station. I just see this light and this authority within them. And so um, we're walking out towards them. Soon as my brother goes up to my dad, starts doing this slither snake thing, like, you know, the traditional, what we see as, as possession inside the movies and stuff like that doing all that and, and so he's grabbing him my brother my dad grabs him he says i'm not scared of you i'm not scared of you throws him into the uh into the car and so at that moment the spirit of the lord revealed to me that everything that i had been studying was of the enemy nothing was a spiritual awakening nothing was spiritual guides I, I was not speaking to ancestors. I was not speaking to um, what I thought was energy. No, I was being deceived by Satan himself. That's the revelation that I got right at that moment. And so I'm looking at my brother through the, through the um, car window and I'm like, and so David looks at me and he says, well, this demon that's speaking through him says, oh, now you see. Oh, now you see Hondalon. Now you get it. Now you understand. Taunting me. Like, oh, now you see you were tricked. Y'all, I kid you not about none of this. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but I kid you not. I get mad at the spirit that's in Davian. So I grab him and I'm like, no, get him out of the car. Get him out of the car. So I remember um, telling my dad, let's stand him over here by the gas station now mind you my mom should have been with us she should have been you know praying with us but she was still mad and i felt that on her i felt that she was still frustrated with us she was embarrassed she didn't want to be here so she she couldn't see the spiritual aspect for looking at the physical aspect so she's looking for my phone she's trying to do where's your keys at and you know just trying to get stuff together you know my brother's just standing and uh, my dad had his back, had his hand on his back and I'm cutting ties of what I thought. I mean, I just felt like these demons had him on a rope, had my brother tied to a rope, like they're pulling him, tied to a rope, like they would not let him go. So I'm cutting in front of him spiritually. I'm doing this physically in front of him, but spiritually I'm cutting ties. And so I'm saying no more, no more, no more. But I, I mean, I'm talking tens of just like I had tens of thousands of angels behind me tens of thousands of demons were grabbing him and pulling him pulling him we get in the car uh my mom was like I'm taking y'all to the hospital I'm taking y'all to the hospital my brother's like no please don't take us to the hospital don't take us to we, that's not where we need to go it's, can you just take us to the house please please and um she was like no I'm taking y'all to the hospital because who knows how much y'all consumed and we started driving headed to the hospital and um I'm praying for Davian and I, I start speaking in tongues and I start putting my um, hand on his back and he's out the window. His arm, I got his arm like this. I'm, I, so I'm holding his arm and got my hand on his back at the same time. And I'm just, I felt like there was light from the spirit, not from me, but from the Holy Spirit that was rested upon me going into him, like hurting him. So um, I'm, I'm saying the blood of Jesus and I'm speaking in tongues and da 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 da. And every, I, I kept speaking in tongues, but every time I would say something in English, all I would say is Satan, Satan, like that, like <laughs> Satan, this is Satan himself here inside of David. And he was the one who tricked me. Like I was getting all this revelation. Like he's the one who's been tricking you. He's the one who, who made you believe that there are other universes. No, 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 no. It's just God and Satan. That's the only two forces that there are. And we, I mean, his, his, Satan's trick is to deceive us. So if he can get you to believe that he does not exist, he's one. That's exactly what he wants you to think. If he can get you to believe that things aren't evil, but they are, he's one. That's exactly what he wants you to think. If he can get you to believe that there's more than one God, that there's more than one thing you can do. No, 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 no. There's God and there's Satan. And one of them is a trick, trickster. That's what he does. He tricks people. Mom says, Delon, the spirit of God is resting on you. The spirit of God is on you right now. Keep going, keep going. So I tell my brother to spit, spit it out, spit it out. So I'm telling him to spit out these demons and he's <laughs> outside the window. It was just crazy, y'all. 
a bunch of stuff going on. I knew that I was hurting him physically. So I let him come back in. And he sat sat back and he's like, oh, oh. And he says, can we please turn on some music? Please just turn on some gospel music. And they went to Tasha Cobbs. Nothing wrong with Tasha Cobbs at all. But him saying that was the demon speaking through him to try to get me to stop casting it out of him to try to get it to be like okay we can rest now we can just let it it was still inside of him so i said no turn that off turn that off and this is the holy spirit telling me these things it's not just me thinking about it. it's the holy spirit revealing these things to me so i said turn it off turn it off roll the window back down and so i'm speaking in tongues again getting it out of him it did not want to come out mm -mm. it did not want satan himself did not want to come out he was not going to come out and I got demons inside of me. I don't have no word. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't reading the Bible. I didn't, I didn't have no word in my hidden in my heart that I could have brought up and, and helped to get this out of him. No, I didn't, I didn't have none of that. So we get to the hospital. We get to the hospital. And I remember seeing the people inside of the hospital, like the nurses and the doctors and the people at the ER through the window. I saw that there were demons inside of them as well. Spirits that just lived inside of them. And... When they saw Davian, they saw Satan. They put Davian in a, in a wheelchair. And so I saw the demons inside of there, and I'm like, he's embarrassed. I said to, to about David, I said, oh, he's embarrassed. Satan is embarrassed. Because these demons were looking at Satan like, what you doing here? Ain't you, you supposed to take him out. What you doing here? You, you, you about to be defeated? So they're looking at him like... So that's why the spirit inside of David was saying, don't take me to the hospital. Don't take me to the hospital. No, nah, because that's, that's where stuff was going to change. My mom went inside in, in, of the ER with David. My dad parked the car, so it was just me and my dad in the car. And when we got out, all my dad said to me was, Delon, I'm, I'm only going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this one time. There's only one God. And that, when I tell y'all that's sunk in me, I was like, I just felt like, Wow. Wow. This is Colossians 2 and 8 from the NAS NASB version of the Bible. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy, empty deception, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. That same scripture in the NLT, New Living Translation version. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. That's clearly speaking against what I had been practicing, what I had been studying, what I thought, you know, these spiritual powers are, are giving me information get into the hospital and um we're sitting down and i see um this doctor comes in this guy he comes in and i knew that he was a homosexual i felt it i felt that 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 spirit in him so he walks in and he's uh, talking to davian and the spirit within davian sits up in his his uh, hospital bed so davian's like this and he's like Yes. Mm hmm Oh, yeah. My name is Davian. And... Like, trying to flirt with the doctor. So, I got mad again. I'm getting more and more mad. I'm like, you know, I want these demons out of him. I want these demons out of him. So, um, he ends up leaving. Another time, this black lady comes in there, and she is... Um, doing like his insurance and stuff like that. So what's your name? And he says, S -s -s -s. and so I grab him, the blood of Jesus. And he's like, thank you, Delon, thank you, Delon. But when she asked, what's your name? This spirit tried to rise up and tell her what its name was. So it was just so crazy, y'all, so crazy. So we're sitting in uh, the waiting room. Everybody ends up leaving. It's just us and Davian. And he's starting to become sedated because they gave him some stuff just to calm him down, let the drug pass, whatever. The, what, the, what they have to do with the hospital. I'm rubbing his hand and I keep saying, stand up, Davian. Stand up. Because I'm seeing spiritually, I'm seeing this light beam 
which was him in the middle of all these demons who were around him all this darkness and black that was just around him like taunting him and keeping him down and so i kept seeing him his spirit on like one knee like could not stand up so i kept saying stand up davian stand up and he said i'm trying to hide. i'm trying i can't i can't he knew what i was seeing we were we had to have been seeing the same thing I'm trying to lie. I can't stand up. I can't stand up. So I'm like, Mom, can I please use your Bible? I need I need your Bible app. I need your Bible app. Now, mind you, I told you I had not been reading. I don't have any any word inside my heart that I can just bring up and nah. I needed the Bible app. So I'm like, Mom, can I please use your phone? Can I please use your phone for the Bible app? And so she's like, Well, I'm gonna just let it play. I'm gonna just let it play. And I said, No, no, I wanna speak it to him. Can I please see your phone? And she's like, No, I'm just gonna let it play. So I kind of try to grab it from her. And she's like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? But it's, this is the demon in me getting irritated with her. So uh, my dad said, uh, Delon, I don't, you don't ever put your hands on your mom. You don't ever put your hands on your mom. So I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, whatever. So then that created a rift between me and my mom. It was just keeping us from being able to really pray for Damien because we had not, we had this alt against each other. And the Bible also says you cannot come to God if you have forgiveness, unforgiveness in your heart for your brother. First, go reconcile with your brother and then come back to me. So he's not even going to hear me whether I talk and, and speak these words or not because I got something with my mom. So we ended up going out to the uh, hallway and I said, Mom, I don't know what it is, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry for tonight. I'm sorry that we even had to be at this place and you know I'm, I'm 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 sorry you know and i don't want you to feel any type of way i just feel like we need to all come together and we need to pray we need to let it go for david we need to pray for david and that's when she let it go she was like okay all right i forgive you i forgive you and we started praying and um then we came back in and that's when everybody's spirits were in the right place to be able to help david after that forgiveness and that's so important too because confession and forgiveness that's that's how you stop harboring what's in your heart to be able to even get to your next level when it comes to spiritually when it comes to being able to speak to God and allowing him to use you if you got unforgiveness in your heart attend to that first attend to that first before you try to prophesy, before you try to speak over people, before you try to preach, whatever it is that you're, you're, God is asking you to do, you have to forgive people. Because God is a God of love. He's not a God of, of jealousy. He's not a God of holding things against people. Love holds no record of wrongdoing. That's what the word says. So, bruh. We get back into the hospital. And, um, I mean, we get back into the room with my brother. And... Now, my mom, I told you we have spiritual gifts. One of them for her is interpretation of tongues, and she can speak to the spirit. She can speak to them. So she starts saying to Davian, in whatever language it was, da -da 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 I'm guessing Latin, I have no idea, but speaking to him in this language. And so he speaks back to her in this deep demonic voice, but it was speaking, I mean, it was, da -da 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 whatever I'm like but speaking back and forth to her but I remember her kind of asking like why why are you here why I'd like I told you to leave my kids alone a long time ago why are you here so he says in English we have rights to them this is generational we we have rights to him he belongs to us so um now this is that that kind of tests your faith if you're a believer because if you believe in generational curses that's essentially what they are is these spirits that have been assigned to your generation assigned to your family to keep you bound to keep you you know what I'm saying but still these spirits are given they, they were made and created by God made and created by God subject to God the Father they know who the Holy One is. I want to read y'all another scripture. This is Luke 4, 33 from the NASB version of the Bible. In the synagogue, there was a spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Let us alone. What business do we have with each other, Jesus of Nazareth? 
Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. This is a spirit telling Jesus, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. They know exactly who this is. They know exactly who Christ is. They know that he's the only God, the only true and living God. They know that they know these things. That's their father too. Right before he got truly sedated, he says, Delon, tell them everything. Tell them everything. And so I said, okay. Okay. I also remember saying to him, these demons know the word. They know the Bible back and forth. They know these scriptures. Satan knows the scripture. And we don't know it. <laughs> I'm a, I call myself a believer. And not at the time. But I'm like, I call myself a believer. And these demons know the word. And I don't. I remember going out into the uh, waiting room. My brother was sedated. Going to sleep. And um, I just told my parents everything told them everything about the meditations, the aura cleansing, the chakras, the um, the events I had been going to, the people that I have talked to, the, the YouTube videos, the meditations, the third eye stuff, everything that I had been diving into, I told them. And my mom said that at that point is when all of the other spirits left me. And that's pivotal because one, forgiveness, and two, confession telling the truth about everything you know what i mean if, if the enemy can harbor something and keep something hidden that's what he likes to do he likes to be in dark corners and keep things hidden you know you can tell him that but don't tell him that you know what i'm saying you can you can you can you can let your testimony be this but don't tell him that part of the testimony you can keep that hidden no nah. no nope. no nope. guys got a freedom everything done in the dark will come to the light so I told them everything. It was probably about 7 a.m. And I was still frightened. I was still like, this was a crazy, crazy, crazy experience. And I had always known about demons. I had known about spirits. I had known about these things. And I had seen them, but I had never had them inside of me. I'd never physically had to get them out of me. So um, I just want to read you guys a couple more scriptures. 1 Corinthians um Okay, so I read y'all 1 Corinthians 18. Now I'll read 19. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the cleverness of the clever I will set aside. So this man-made, man-made plus spiritual forces telling you that this is how you attain things. This is how you manifest things. This is how you bring things into your life. It's a trick. It's a trick. Okay, it's, 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 it's a way to deceive you into following your own will and thinking that you are your own God instead of being subjected unto the one un, under the one that created you. I want to read you guys Matthew 7 verses 13 and 14 from the NASB version of the Bible. Enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction and there are many who enter through it for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. And there are few who find it. So I say all that to say, there are so many things that you can believe in this life. There are so many things that, especially right now, while the world is going through a crisis, there are so many people searching for peace. So many people searching for happiness, searching for some type of clarity in their life that they'll attach to anything trying to give it to them. But there's only one way. There's only one God. There's only one true and living God, and that's Jesus Christ. That is Jesus Christ. Anything that is outside of that is a trick. It's a trick. And I know that this testimony can save somebody. I know that some people will totally reject this testimony. It's, I mean, that's written. That's written. They did that to Jesus. They didn't want to believe what that man said. I know that this is not going to make sense to a lot of people. But for the people that this was meant for, heed to it. 
heed to it because it came at the right time. God has been knocking on my heart to do this testimony, but I believe in, in his timing. And it's, I believe that this is the perfect time to do it. And I just totally trust him. I totally trust him. And now my life is totally, totally, totally different, totally changed. And it took me a minute, even after coming out of that, I didn't just jump into Christianity. I didn't just jump into following Christ again. I just, you know, I was, I was empty. I was still searching, but I knew he kept putting me on my face. Like, how, what else do I have to do for you to learn and for you to know this? Only me. It's only me. And you guys have seen my physical transformation, but you have not seen my mental and my spiritual transformation. And they are all three in one. The way that God has completely been changing my life through his word, because his word is his spirit. And if you are seeking to really find life, you need to read the word of God. Read the word of God because it's more than, than a book of rules. He comes to bring us freedom. He comes to bring us liberty and life and really learning how to love. That's all God is, is love, love, love. And our version of love in this world has been perverted so badly. That's not true love. That's not true love. That's, that's, you know what I mean? We, we, we have so, we take what God created, sex, love, marriage, and we flipped it upside down. And there are so many people that want you to believe what they believe, but I believe what Christ believes. I believe what Christ believes. And, um, so yeah. Yeah. I hope that this can help somebody. I hope that um, you guys talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. If you, you know, talk to me. I can understand. I can hear you. I can give you some clarity on some things. And I love you guys. I really, really, truly do. And I implore you to follow Jesus Christ. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? I love you guys.